Good afternoon, my name is John Hamilton, and I have the great pleasure of being here with candidate Ted Gaines. Well, it's Assemblyman Ted Gaines, right? That's right. Now, yes. now for people, for the 30 seconds of background, now you're running for the state senate for the late Senator Dave Cox's seat, is that That's correct? That's right, yes. Now, for people who have, now this has already gone through the primary uh, stage and yes. stuff, so, okay. So we've got the, uh, the runoff election January 4th, which okay. is a... Kind of a difficult time. People are trying right, to celebrate right. Christmas and getting ready for the new year, and uh, they're going to be getting an absentee ballot as their Christmas cards are arriving. So <laughs> we just want to make sure remind they don't go, people yeah. that there is an election, and <laughs> right. uh, please uh, fill out your ballot and, and turn it in as soon as you can. And for those that are going to the polls, mm -hmm. please remember on Tuesday, January fourth, that there is an election. Understood. Now this is an interesting one to where if people are just part of one of these rural counties, they may not realize how large this district is. Now, what's now the makeup of this district is uh, is what? It's you, twelve counties. Twelve so counties it goes from Modoc County on the Oregon border all the right. way to Mono County, which includes Mammoth Lakes and Bridgeport. Okay. Now your district now covers what area? It your, is um, Placer, El Dorado, Alpine, and part of Sacramento County. Okay. So, of those, uh, there's a lot of overlap actually. Right. With right. my assembly district with the senate district now so i think for areas in the areas that we cover uh, there's a lot of interest in in rural issues mm -hmm. uh, anything that uh, you'd like to mention on you know the thing that affects you know the, the more rural areas well i think uh, we've got to take a look at public safety i think right. that is a, a big issue and when we, we look at funding we know yeah. that we've got a 25 yeah. billion dollar deficit right and so how are we going to make sure there's adequate funding for Communication. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of um, updating of the communication system uh, throughout the rural counties. Uh, and then we've got to make sure there's just public safety funding available. And I want to try to work on a bipartisan basis to see how we can make sure that public safety does get its funding. Um, and while at the same time, not promoting any tax increases. Right. And, uh, right. We need to live within our means uh, in the legislature. Speaking of rural, we had a diesel go by, so that affected our audio for just a second. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a little bit, a little bit about your background. You've been in public service for how long? Uh, this, gosh, I've been uh, in public service for ten years. Okay. And I'm a small business owner. I had a uh, property and casualty insurance agency for 29 years, uh -huh. and I still run that uh, to this day. I was in uh, a couple days this week, trying to keep things in order. And believe me, we've had to make some uh, tough cuts. That could be last tough three juggling, years. juggling the pri I mean, your your business and you know. It's, it's yeah, and I have a business partner that watches right. things day to day, and I compensate him to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's good for me to get into my business Understood. and look at reality yeah. and look at how the laws that are being passed in the legislature are impacting a business, a small business, on an everyday basis. All right. Now, what are some of the key issues that you would like to? You know, you would like to see go forward. I mean, what you know, I know you've been running on uh, low tax. You know, the, some of the tax issues. Yes. And stuff. Yeah, I think we ought to be uh, figuring out how to create private sector jobs. Right. And uh, the government cannot do that per se, but we can get out of the way. Mm -hmm. We could look at regulatory reform, and I did carry a regulatory reform bill last year. Uh, I had uh, bipartisan support. Uh, but we need to launch that again this year. Right. And so we're right. going to uh, look at pushing that really hard and see if we can have success there. We need to hold the line on taxes. Uh, I would support some tax credits for job creation here in the state of California. Got it. Uh, to try to spur uh, those jobs. We've got 2.4 million people unemployed, uh, unemployment rate over 12%. And one thing that's resonated clearly is that people are hurting throughout the Senate district. Last little question: Do you think, with the, you know, the real hard fiscal challenges that the state has, do you think that um, Governor Brown coming in, he's probably not going to have any choice but to make some. I mean, as collectively as legislators, to make a, some real hard choices going forward. I mean, it's just because, you know, we're kind of up against it, so to speak. Is that? Do you think that's accurate, or is that? He's got some tough decisions. They're projecting $20 billion deficits for right. the next five years. And uh, he did say that he's willing to make $10 billion in cuts and then wants to take an initiative to the people for uh, it's either a fee or a tax increase. He wasn't real specific when I asked the question. <laughs> uh, but um, I shared with him that I thought that would fail. I, right. You know, the people do not want more money taken out of their pocketbooks yeah. in a very tough economy. Yeah. Uh, they're expecting the legislature and the governor to figure this out without any more money from their pocketbook. Understood. Thank you very much for Great. your time. Appreciate Wonderful. it. Good Thank luck you. down the street.